Hello, my name is Adam Winstock and I'm the founder and director of the Global Drug Survey. We run the world's biggest drug survey and I'd like to share with you what we learned from the biggest study ever of nitrous oxide use, um, which is one of the areas that we focused on this year. So Global Drug Survey 2015 collected data from over 100,000 people um, through November, December 2014. Uh, we had responses from over 50 countries. We were translated into 10 languages. And really, I've just got to say thank you to everyone who took the time. Now, nitrous oxide is a fascinating substance. It's been around and has been used in medicine for the last 150 years. It's still used routinely in dental surgery, um, in childbirth, and also in paediatrics where it's a really useful and remarkably safe um, dissociative anaesthetic. Um, and I guess what's happened over the last decade or two is that its other function, that as a foma and bacteriostatic agent, uh, within the food industry has been hijacked by those people who want to get a couple of bulbs, pop it in a balloon and have a bit of a giggle. And I guess that this is what we're now seeing um, across festivals and clubs in many parts of the UK, Europe, Australasia and America. We did some work last year that suggested that it might not be actually as a benign a substance as everyone thinks. And since Global Drug Survey is interested in making drug use safer, regardless of the legal status of the drug, we thought we'd better do a little bit more work so we could get some information back out to people. So what this slide shows is how the prevalence of nitrous oxide among the Global Drug Survey sample varies really quite widely, um, with the greatest prevalence in the Netherlands and in the United Kingdom. Um, but you can see other countries uh, such as Poland, uh, and, and Australia, the United States, you know, around seven, eight percent of those kind of countries had used in the last year. And a very small um, percentage of those people were worried that their use had got out of control. So that's what worried about use means in this context, because as we're going to show, there's a whole bunch of other worries that people have. So the data I'm going to present now is from over 6,800 last year users that makes it the biggest study of nitrous oxide ever conducted. Um, that also represented around 16% of the whole sample who said that um, uh, they'd actually ever used it in their lifetime, and it was about 6.5% in the last 12 months. The most common method of use was um, from a balloon, um, and a small percentage had inhaled either from a plastic bag or directly from gas bulbs, both of those are incredibly risky because they carry the risk of asphyxiation and suffocation um, and potentially cryo burns because when the gas comes out of those cylinders, it's super, super cold and that can't just burn the back of your throat, but can also affect your vagus nerve, which can affect the way your heart beats. So that's a really dangerous thing. Um, pretty much across the world, the most common source were those little whipped cream bulbs, but in some countries, um, and it was about 7% of last year users, industrial tanks uh, were the most common source. In terms of where people are getting hold of their nitrous oxide, you know, supermarkets are common, friends are common, about 25% are buying online, festivals are a pretty common source. And in fact, in terms of where people are using them, actually, probably like most drugs, the most common place is actually at house parties. Again, really popular at festivals, people using at home, and at clubs, although increasingly clubs are getting really twitchy about people flogging nitrous on their venues. So now let's look at the pattern of use in terms of the number of episodes of use that these 6,800 people had been using nitrous. So the first thing to say is overwhelmingly, most people had used really infrequently, almost 80% had used on less than 10 occasions. In fact, 27% of people had used just once. Saying that, there were a very small percentage of people who'd used on more than 50 occasions and just under 1% who'd used on more, more than 100 occasions in the last year. In terms of frequency of use, 58% um, had used um, just once or twice in the last year, 23% um, had used every couple of months, 3.2% had been using at least weekly. So what that basically means is that over 90% of the people who were using nitrous used monthly or less often. Less often. Now, all drug-related harm is generally related to dose. So now let's look at how many 
hits, balloons, bulbs, people were doing in a session. Really importantly, the majority of people are being really safe and really sensible, with over 40% using three or less hits in a session. 46% had used four to 10 hits. A small group had used more than 10 hits in a session, and about 1% actually reported using over 100 bulbs in a session. Overall though, about 64% um, of people had used five or less balloons in a session. So now let's look at the short-term effects. So you can see um, just over a quarter reported hallucinations and confusion. Now, that might be a desired effect for some people. In other instances, actually, that might be quite unpleasant and a bit unrisky. I think we can all agree that nausea ain't that nice. That happens happening around 10% of people. 4.5% of people reported fainting. That's potentially dangerous if you're doing it near a body of water or a busy street where there's cars and about 1.6% of people reported having accidents. One of the really easy ways of finding out whether drugs are causing people problems is actually just to ask them whether or not they've got worries. And this year, 7.7% of um, users said they were worried about the effect of nitrous oxide on their mental health. 9.3% of users said they were worried about the impact on their physical health. And what's really worrying for me is that that represents more than tripling of the around just 2% of respondents who said they were worried about the impact on their mental health or physical health last year when we did the study. And last year we had 6,000 users of nitrous who took part. The really important message from this year though is that our initial work exploring the risks of nerve damage with nitrous oxide seem to have been borne out. So the first thing to talk about is that 5.5% of people reported ever experiencing any signs of nerve damage. Um, and that meant experiencing facial numbness or um, tingling. 3.7% um, had reported numbness in their hands or fingers um, or tingling. And about 0.6% said they'd experienced painful sensations. In terms of the experience of those things in the last year, it was 4% reporting any signs of nerve damage, which included facial numbness, tingling, numbness in their hands or feet, or painful sensations. Now, these symptoms are suggestive of a peripheral neuropathy. Um, in this instance, it's probably a peripheral neuropathy due to a lack of vitamin B12. And that's because nitrous oxide inactivates vitamin B12. Um, B12 is commonly got from animal protein, and that's why vegetarians very often take supplements because they can be quite deficient in this particular vitamin and the body stores don't last a very long time. So our worry is that actually you could actually get rid of most of your body stores fairly quickly if you were really caning it on nitrous. Um, the other bit to say is that once again around 2% of users are worried that their use had got out of control. The really important thing is that our data, and we've only just started analysing this, suggests loud and clear that the more frequently you use, the greater your risk is of reporting signs of nerve damage, and the more hits per day you have, the more likely you are to report those symptoms of nerve damage. Now, numbness or tingling is one thing, but when it becomes even more worrying or more severe, that's where people actually start reporting functional impairment because they are losing sensation. And of those people who are reporting numbness or tingling in their face or feet or arms or legs, around one third reported at least some difficulty in walking or using their arms or legs or typing or operating their phone. That's a really high level, I think. And I think the takeaway messages are, is that for the majority of people, you know, nitrous oxide is not gonna pose a risk, but there are a small minority of heavy users who are at risk of developing neurological problems. Now, if detected early, and if people stop and seek medical advice, those things should be entirely reversible. But they are out there and people need to be aware of them so they can moderate their use and share this information with their friends. And as ever, if you're worried, just go and see your doctor. What should the right response be? I think it's about good education, not regulation. Actually trying to ban nitrous is gonna be really difficult, unlikely to be effective. And of course, banning drugs doesn't make them safer. But good education uh, and providing that to people who want to stay safe and avoid harm, 
is a really good thing. So I'm just going to leave you with the Global Dog Survey's tips for safer use um, so you can keep yourself and your friends safe. Um, until then, um, look after yourself and your mates. Thank you.